There we go. Got it? Yeah, I think it pushed us right live, too. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Google. So what, we're like on right now? Yeah, we're totally on right now. Fantastic. <laughs> that was nice. No real Eight warning minutes. on that either. Eight minutes early. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Is this who we are now? We're we're just two live people. I guess so. I guess so. All right here. Uh, yeah, it says no. We're yeah, we're definitely live. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Matt. Way to go. Uh, <sighs> right. Yeah. Let's see here. Matt's a professional, I swear. I I am excellent at this. There we go. We got Matt Hill. We got it's a little rusty. It's a little rusty. Yeah, well, I don't know why. Normally, I get the chance to to signal it to go live, but that's okay. We'll start a few minutes early. Yeah, why not? I'm prepared. I am. I, I have all of my goods prepared. Absolutely, absolutely. So, <laughs> uh, I'm disappointed. Disappointed that didn't work out quite right. But that's okay. Worked out perfectly. We're good. Worked out, We're worked rocking out just the way it was supposed to, man. Absolutely professionals here professionals serendipity oh absolutely What's that what do, who do we got i don't even have my uh my youtube open here uh, uh, let me get el telefona there you go you got a few people showing up la telefona no el no? telefon there you go um Hi, guys. It's nice to see you, even though I can't see you. That's Hi, I guys. It's a new day. What surprise do you have in show. store tonight? And Matt is back. We're breaking all the rules. I have a nice cold apple juice here. Where are we live at two minutes ago? That's true. We were live two minutes ago. Volume. There we go. The great return. Yeah. Now I can see people. People. Hi, guys. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Dr. Nick. Uh, all right. Hold Ooh, on. Oh, Dr. Nick. Ugh. Oh, skeet, there skeet, skeet. Skeet, 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 skeet. We're going to wait. Get some people in the chat here. Come on, folks. Let's go. Everybody roll in. We're going to see some folks rolling in. It's 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 the comeback special. Oh, are you on the mint again? I'm on the mint. I yeah. didn't really left. Um, Cushman's. Puts hair on your chest and hair on your feet. Not necessarily a place where you want it, but hey. Yeah. Also, it's, one my favorite, see... uh, it's one of my favorite cartridges, actually. Uh, it's very fresh. It's a good morning wake up. Yes. It's like a kiss from grandma, right on the lips. Very graphic. What, very you, graphic. You, you so, uh, Matt, where's your, uh, where's your Halloween costume, buddy? I'm dressed as a salt-based grower today. So. <laughs> Hence the t-shirt. There you go. I'm actually not wearing any pants. So um, we, we didn't want to show that, though. This is a, a kids program. Um, Tim, you were going to dress up as something? Here, yeah, hold on. Let turn, me, uh, turn, turn off let your me, camera let face me, there. Let there me you go. Oh, okay. There we go. Transform there real quick. Well, he's doing that. I'll give a shout out to our sponsor, Mars Hydro. Mars Hydro. They made this light. It works great. I got another one right there. It's growing some pepper plants. That are there. I can't do that. It's like staring into a mirror. Horrible. Yeah, I love, the, I love the amount of effort you put into that Mars Hydro plug. It seemed indicative of the amount of support they might be uh, throwing your way recently. Anyway, no, didn't say that. Uh, Ta-da! What a crabby bastard. <laughs> I worked really hard on this. I started it about 20 minutes before we came online. He put uh, minutes of effort. Minutes! Minutes of effort. <laughs> minutes! Yeah. Am I not a crab? Well, you're definitely definitely a crab. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can't see what people are saying. Hey, crab man. What up, Haken? What's shaking, Haken? I got to start saying that. I don't, I can't believe I haven't started saying that already. Oh, oh. Can we just give like a, a little round of applause for our man, Wicked Chronic, uh, for coming up with <laughs> dabs and desserts for the Tacos and Tokes show last night? Uh, let me tell you. Absolutely. That's, that's, that is the plan. That like for Absolutely. 100% we're going to have a, a dabs and desserts episode. So if you guys aren't aware, if you haven't seen the show, Tim and Tanya, maybe we can get Tanya to come and say hi. I don't know if she's able to come and give a little wave, start basking in that newfound celebrity status. Tim and Tanya have uh, kicked off a show called Tacos and Tokes with Tim and Tanya. There's the lovely Tanya. And Tanya hey. Where uh, right now it's sort of every other week they're throwing out a show where they're sampling a fantastic strain. Some right now it's been some uh, LP stuff, but I know you're planning on doing some other stuff. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna mix it up. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start uh, reviewing some strains as far as uh, what people are growing as well. So part of our community, what what everybody's. Uh, uh, really recommending as a strain, so we'll definitely be be giving some. This is awkward here. Yeah, sit, <laughs> sit on grandpappy's lap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're, we're going to be switching it up. Uh, we're going to be varied in our menu. We're going to not just uh, cook food. We're also going to do restaurant uh, like ordered food reviews as well. So uh, and snacks maybe. Yeah, various... weird snacks. We got it. We got a cool Asian uh, grocery store just around the street from uh, just around the corner from us that has some nice. really weird stuff. So we're going to uh, we're going to vary it up and mix it up, and hopefully everybody will come along for the journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, guys, there's a link down below. If you've um, not seen it, uh, I suggest you go check it out. That last episode was a real banger. And that curry that you guys made looks delicious. Uh, so, it's sim simple, delicious, like really easy to make. I recommend everybody try it, even if you're not into spice. it's uh, It'll be right up your alley. Flavorful. Oh, so delectable. <laughs> nice. So I wanted to uh, just wait for my dog to stop barking, and of course address the uh, the title. Um, first off, Susan, if you're watching, mm -hmm. um, that one's for you. Uh, I'm back. Uh, three and a half weeks. That's all it took um, for a massive amount of support from the community. Uh, you guys rallied hard and showed me extreme love, and really helped me realize that this whole thing isn't just about me jumping on here and getting people to watch my videos. It's about producing content. It's going to help educate people, teach them how to grow, teach them how, um, you know, they can learn all about good organics. And, you know, I mean, on occasion, we touch on some salt-based stuff. Because Again, I'm dressed and, up as a salt-based girl. And right? I, I think you're understating one thing, Matt. Fun. Absolutely. You know, we have Absolutely. fun with our community. We have fun with each other. And that's the main thing is we're having a good time while we're learning and while we're, you know, exploring weirdo roads to go down with plants. And that's, that's, I think the, the name of the game that we do so well. Yeah, for sure. So I invited Tim to come along and we're just, we're just trying to right? do a little grow help. I know as Charles, he said, he's got some issues with his uh, all natural grow off, which we're going to address here uh, in just a minute. Actually, I think I can even pull that up and we can show that live. Uh, so those uh, you who are not aware of what's been going on earlier this year, um, these guys, Young Sang Cho from uh, Jadam uh, fame reached out to me. He sent me that uh, new book of his. And if you haven't gotten it, it's like the absolute best book on pest identification. It's amazing. Um, he reached out and he was talking about, um, you know, uh, helping us out, getting us kind of started with some of this um, Jadam stuff. So we took the the reins. We ran Organic Farming Month all, all of July in uh, in the Discord. We had uh, UT teaching us to do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, everybody started making their own inputs. And there's 18 of us that are uh, competing in an all-natural grow-off where you make inputs yourself. And it looks like our good friend Charles, a.k.a. Tramp, is having some issues with his growth. So I think I can pull this up here. And we can actually do some 
oh, excuse me, troubleshooting live. Because that's the thing. The, the, none of this stuff comes from the grocery store. Everybody took and like made bokashi and compost and did all sorts of cool stuff to uh, get their grow up and going. And of course, we do expect people to have some, some concerns, some problems. So let's see here. We have a picture. Yes. Yes, we do. We've got a uh, picture, Tim. Okay. And uh, where's the picture? Where am I looking? Hold, hold on a second here. I'm going to share my screen. You're going to get it here live because we do have the technology. I'll take, while he's loading that up, I'm going to take a second just to plug our community as well. If you're not already a member of our Discord, uh, reach out to Matt, get an invite because we've oh, got dozens link, of guys. Link below. Link right below? Link below. That link below. Join the Discord. You can get hands-on advice from, from me uh, and Matt and a dozen other guys that know even more <laughs> than Matt and I. So uh, it's, it's, it's the place to be, especially if you're trying to get into organics, you're trying to get off that... Uh, get off the salt dick uh we can help you with that and if you want to stay on the salt dick train too we can help you with that as well we're professionals salty dick that's where salty that's dick. where that's where we're coming from as so, cannabis would say dick me dick me we are going straight uh, restricted okay. <laughs> oh we got a deficiency I'm not seeing any deficiency down at the bottom, though, which tells me right off the bat something funky is going on. It's not nitrogen because it would be pulling it from the bottom, bringing it up top. Um, I am noticing what looks like some potential pest damage there, uh, Tramp. I don't know if you're picking up on that, Tim. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm picking up on a, a couple of things. Get bigger here. So looking at the looking at the leaves themselves there's some really really deep striations in the leaves as well as the way that the leaves are hanging uh which indicate to me actually a, a watering issue uh above all else which is probably causing a root issue which is affecting your new growth um i i we could we could definitely go like so is this the angio this is his ANGO. Remember, this things were looking ANGO. great with this up until now. I'm just wondering if this thing hasn't just eaten everything in the soil and we've got a deficiency because it's hungry. Uh, well, so again, the stag and the, and the, the, the deep serrated leaves there uh, indicate to me a root issue, uh, more so than it being out of food. Mm. It's in a, how, how big a pot is that in, Trent? I can't see the chat right now here. I'm going to stop sharing it. We know, we know what the plant looks like. So, Overwatering? Overwatering. Uh, and uh, like I'm saying that, so the way the leaves are hanging and the deep grooves in those leaves indicate to me a, a plant that has a ton of liquid in it. It's all fat. It's bulbous. It, it's, it's, it's not happy. And its roots are suffering, which is causing its newest growth to suffer. Yeah, uh, that's why you're not seeing it pull nutrients from the bottom of the plant to save the top. Uh, it's 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 hurting in the in the root zone. And just, just all of the feet. leaves, they they've got that 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 wet heavy look to them. Yep, yeah, that saggy look is. I mean, you can sometimes find gen genetically plants will kind of have yep. that bottom uh, sag, but that coupled with the really deep. Uh, grooves in the leaves, like I said, tend to indicate to me an overwatered plant in general, which oftentimes will correlate with a uh, root issue, uh, which is what you're seeing the beginning uh, uh, symptoms of at, at the top of the plant. Yeah, so let it dry down quite a bit. I'd even, I'd even let that thing go completely dry um, and then give it a, just a gentle water to help pull those roots out. Um, yeah, uh, dry it until it, it tells you it's hurting for water, until it's yeah. like, I'm about to die from underwater. And then you go ahead and water it and slowly <laughs> get that, that root zone built back up, like Matt said. Fantastic. Uh, Rod Dog, what causes twisted leaves? Um, where are you seeing twisted up top, um, down below? There's uh, define typically twisted, up top. Define yeah. twisted. Define if twisted. If you've got right on the very top. Hey, hey, I can THC. Good to see you, brother. So, howdy, dude. Yeah, if we can get a little bit more info from you, Rod. That would uh, that would help. Yeah. 
But uh, what do you mean by twisted? Where are you seeing it? Uh, sometimes it can mean nothing. Sometimes it can just be a funky leaf. If you got them all over your plant, that might indicate something for sure. Uh, if you have it kind of one spot of a bud, like what point in the in the game are you He's at here? With the slight twist at, on top. I'm guessing that's probably just new growth coming in because it, it does that. It, it twists and moves around a little bit, gets a little bit of that curl to it. Um, I wouldn't be concerned until it's grown out. If it's starting to look funky as it's growing out, there can be a couple of things, um, possible damage. If you've recently um, tried topping or more so thinning the top of that site, that can cause some really weird growth initially as well. Okay, so it's crimped and slow growth in veg. Oh. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to hate to say it, uh, and it sounds again like a, a watering issue to me. Uh, however, early, early veg, you'll oftentimes see some weird, funky stuff happening before the plant normalizes. Uh, and that can often be genetics as well. But uh, Rod Dog, why don't you join our Discord? Show me some photos of, of what you're dealing with and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Yeah, link in the description, and we can we can definitely help you out, folks. Yep. It's, uh, I hate to keep oh, on oh, pointing right. over watering, but quite honestly, that's the watering is probably the issue that people take the longest figuring out as far as. I still struggle with it. I mean, I've recently killed plants from overwatering. Like, and and you have an automated watering system, and you're still struggling with it. You know, like it's like. Watering is a very, very fine night game. It's why a dude like me still hand waters, you know, like I'm, uh, it's so do or die with watering. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, you talk about, I've got an automated watering system with the blue mats. Uh, If you guys look back and then a couple months ago, I absolutely killed off a a blackberry kush and unicorn poop because I, I screwed up. I, I, had my watering system things were going i wasn't maintaining batteries properly and they weren't reading properly normally i'm not going to blame equipment and actually again this isn't the equipment's fault this was my fault for not maintaining the equipment properly but again for trusting improperly maintained equipment which led me to overwatering with the jug Uh, again again though entirely your fault at the end of the day right like it's uh it's 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 a it's a fool who blames his equipment Yep. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, it's always up to you to verify and double check and ensure that things are going correctly. Uh, but uh, like Haken was just saying, it's 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 probably the most common issue is overwatering or underwatering of your soil. Uh, more typically, overwatering. People feel like they need to keep shoving water down a plant's throat to be healthy and that's not really the case uh yeah. especially well, with with a plant like cannabis and depending on the medium you're using too like cocoa cocoa holds an insane amount of water like even yeah. when coke feels dry it's still wet <laughs> right so yeah but it, it, the, the 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 main thing to realize is is you're dealing with the root zone right so if you have a medium that is not allowing a soaking wet medium to to expose oxygen to the roots then you're going to have issues if you overwater it. As simple as that. Yeah. It's it, it, every time, every time you'll have issues. And until you get that watering figured out, those nutrient imbalances that you keep seeing, you're 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 going to continue to see them. As soon yeah. as the the roots start giving it giving way or or uh, dying off, so to speak, I'm famous for just replying to people, "Oh, what you see there is root death." uh well i i'm being as literal as i can as i can say i look at a plant and tell you you're having root issues or root death that's exactly what it is it's roots that are dying out as above so below so if you have dying roots you're gonna have a dying plant up above yeah and and i think from my personal experience nothing hits a plant as hard as root death like they just two yeah. three days and your plant's gone from okay to oh you, you can drown out a, you can drown out a plant in in 24 hours yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so Charles just noting there, uh, leaves twisting can be light issue, like not having enough. Eh, potentially, yeah. Um, like not having enough, I I would be, it, it depends on what you're looking at, but if you see them twist like this, it's oftentimes trying to protect from too much light. Yeah, it can be one uh, or the other. Um, so Taco yeah. ink, um, discoloration happening on the top yeah. of the petioles. Um, it's, it's protecting those nutrient pathways. Or I shouldn't say discoloration, purpling. When your plant starts to go purple, it's usually a protection sort of thing. 
right? So yeah, so purple is triggering those anthrocyanin. It's an anthrocyanin response. Typically, that's uh, temperature induced, uh, but it can be uh, a sign of a molybdenum deficiency. It can be a sign of uh, uh, Again, root issues early on in life, um, it, it can signify a lot of things. It, it can be uh, a lot of uh, uh, exposure to light as well, right? It's, yeah. it's kind Especially of like if a, you see that up top there with things starting to purple, just on the tops of leaves, more yeah. of the top of the plant, you could have too much. It's like light. a sunburn protection effect. Um, yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of plants that actually primarily use anthrocyanin has their photosynthetic chemical as opposed to chlorophyll yeah and those are the plants that you see that are are fully fully red plants like that that's that's they, they have very little actual chlorophyll compared to anthrocyanin in their in their leaves um yeah you got a nice one there too i got Purple that heart. Yeah. yeah so what's going on in the grow guys anybody need help with anything else any any issues going on that what is going on cam Woo-hoo! okay <laughs> What else we got in the chat here? Should I use five or ten gallon fabric pots? Um, for what, Jason? What are you using five or ten gallon fabric pots for? Yeah. I mean, it, it, obviously, I'm going to say bigger is better all the time, right? Um, the bigger your battery, the more space you got in there for your roots to grow. Uh, you know, it, more of a buffer. You more of a buffer you have. Uh, more of a reserve you have. Uh, so if you're doing organics, the smaller you go in pot size, the more of a challenge it is. I, I can I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Pop is hitting it there. 15 gallons. Um, if you're doing organics and you don't want to be doing lots of teas and stuff like that, um, 15 gallons, sort of about the minimum. 30 is better. Um, but even bigger still, it's, it's just going to be that bigger battery and whatnot. <laughs> Tomatoes. Yeah, funny, Jason. I do I do generally five, seven, or ten gallon uh, containers uh, in organics, but it, it, it's it's a weekly tea is what that involves. I basically I build a soil that's strong enough to carry me through veg, and then it gets a tea every week, uh, PK booster tea every week uh, in flower. <laughs> so somebody's got thrips i'm an expert in that area um <laughs> if you're in flower of course thrips are a pain yes yeah. so i'm actually um fighting the worst thrift infestation i've ever had in my flower space right now um and i'm gonna do it by chopping down a bunch of plants it's just i don't know why they've blown up i've been doing ipm like crazy i think it's just um, so much plant matter out there. Um, you guys haven't seen the grow here in a little while, but they'll have an update coming on later this week. Um, just mm-hmm. what's happening there. But um, thrips. We demand, we demand to see the infestation. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll show that. So thrips are fucking brutal. 60-day <laughs> life cycle, right? Um, they live above and below the soil. So you've got to treat both. And you got to do it for a long period of time. If you're in flower, predators are your best bet, and you're only controlling at that point. You're not defeating. Uh, otherwise, in veg, spray like lots, lots of insecticidal soap up top and uh, nematodes down below is the current method that I'm using. And in veg, seems to be working really well. I've all but fingers crossed, knock on wood, eradicated them in this space behind me. Um, in the flower room, I'm going to actually end up hitting it with a pyrethrin fog. Uh, as much as I don't like to do it, I've had them out there for over a year. And they're so out of control right now. Um, I'm actually harvesting some plants early. And I'm going to be doing a fog out there just because that's that's the only uh, course that I really have right now because they're so invasive. Um, and then I'll be releasing a whole bunch of predators about five days after I fog. Just give a chance for that pyrethrin to break down and get out of the uh, area before I drop a lot more bugs out there i would i would also recommend uh matt incorporating diatomaceous earth into your top dresses i have been i have okay. actually yeah if you can see it uh, right and yeah, maybe right between the two five gallon buckets there's there's the bottle of diatomaceous earth right awesome. there yeah no and that's that's a, a a great tool that a lot of people uh don't use effectively i would say mm. um so you can 
you can use diatomaceous earth to fight against soil pests really really effectively but if you develop a cake you haven't done anything so uh the the key is really to incorporate it into the soil in the initial mix and then when you are treating a plant you're doing a light dusting of it and continue to bottom water a plant as opposed to top watering it and that diatomaceous earth can really really take effect uh if you're in a in in mat shoes like with a with a uh the automated water system watering system uh it, it, it's almost ideal because the water goes directly into into the soil already right one of the other approaches that you can take and what i've been doing in here lately is um i'll do uh, watering let things dry down on top then i'll apply my diatomaceous earth and then i'll bottom water for the next several days that exactly. way that that powder stays up top because once it it turns into that that the cake like tim said it's it's useless right it's it's then just a, a good source of silica like norma g is asking there in the comments well, yeah th that's it yeah it is a it's a great it's a, it's a, it's pretty much pure silica yeah it's a great source of silica it is slow release though so, and that's why i'm saying it's best to really incorporate it if you're using thinking of it as a silica source incorporated at your soil's earth so when you're initially mixing up that 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 batch of soil uh and that'll that'll do a world of wonders for you um but what was that uh, so the other thing i would recommend with diatomaceous earth if you're sprinkling on top is to incorporate some coarse sand uh i'm i'm a huge uh fan of silica sand as well which i i use for all of my uh all of my succulents and uh, if I'm having a bad, for instance, uh, fungus gnat issue uh, or, or, or thrips, which I don't tend to deal with too often, uh, I'll incorporate sand with the DE in the mix and that'll uh, prohibit it from becoming that cake, that, that concrete cake that everybody's uh, used to getting whenever they use it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you will just touch on fungus gnats for a minute too, uh, if you do have a fungus gnat problem, don't call your girl. Fungus gnats are never a, a thing to freak out about. I had like 8 million fungus gnats in this tent about two weeks ago, just because the time of year and I got a bloom, right? Eh, whatever happens. I still have a few flying around. I don't care. They're only fungus gnats. Uh, nematodes, nematodes, nematodes. But uh, what I want to touch on that um, in particular was the sand thing. That's also a really good thing. If you're dealing with um, a nematode infest, a nematode, fungus gnat infestation, you don't have access to nematodes, um, you know, put a half inch thick layer of sand on there. You know, that's going to stop them from being able to get down in the soil. But then the yeah. one thing you have to be careful of is the style of pot that you're using. Um, and I realized this uh, a while ago, but I've got the containers, the plastic containers that down on the bottom. Um, do I actually have them sitting here? Yeah, I do. For demonstration purposes, I came prepared. So you notice these guys, how they've got these holes? Perfect, perfect for fungus gnats. They love these little holes. So, yep. so that's the thing. If you're dealing with something like this, maybe you can put these into a fabric container as well. Um, I've thought about doing that, but nematodes, they tend to work out pretty good for fungus gnats in general anyway. Yeah, so. you can. Uh, so you can actually grab a little DE and like pat it to the side of each of those holes. And that's actually what I do too. It's like yes. I tap, tap. cake a little Get bit in. in and yeah. it, when it gets wet, it's like a, it's like a nice little plug that still allows water through, but not, not bugs. Uh, we did get an interesting question there from Julian asking, why does my bud keep losing its smell? Help! Oh, excellent. <laughs> so, uh, Julian, huge, huge problem. There's, there's two different reasons to lose your terpenes, and that's temperatures that are too high or humidity that is too low in combination. Um, during the grow and during the dry. Yeah, so exactly you can burn off your terps during the grow if it gets too hot and not humid enough uh so you need to keep your eye on that and then during the dry the drying portion is crucial uh as is a decent curing in my opinion so again what i would recommend to you julian is join our discord and let's walk through your process of, of what you're doing to drink flour drying or harvest and and curing uh process and and we can definitely help improve that for you oh and uh grove bags oh grove bags for sure 
make sure you get the dry proper though you know within yeah. plus minus five percent of that that target 62 63 percent at least what i go for um before yep. you shove them in the bag and stuff um darcy potter potter how would it work to screen the drain holes of the pot to prevent gnats you probably need a pretty fine mesh screen i can't see that it would work if yeah, you had a fine enough yeah, mesh, but... yeah you, you can't get a screen really fine enough uh well i mean you can you could get like a like a bubble screen or something like that but i mean that's really your if you're getting like a, a little piece of silk screen or something like that it could work but uh i don't think it's necessary uh i don't think it's a big enough issue uh i've heard of some people culling grows from fungus gnats and i think it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard in my life uh, just gnats. Um, yeah so uh yeah Julian, link in the description there to the Discord, sir. Um, come and join us. We'll we'll definitely get you fixed. Please up. Please do. And Plus Jason, be... will cover crop help with fungus gnats? Cover cover crop can help with a, a whole host of things, uh, in, including making a more hospitable environment for the predators that you're introducing to your soil uh, to keep those fungus gnats at bay. So, uh, short answer to your question use cover crop if 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 you're growing in an organic environment it, it's hugely beneficial for many many reasons uh haken's point note that there's something called no cm screens that are really fine screens easy to find yeah there you go I yeah wasn't yeah you find you find them uh for like cottages and stuff no cms are a little black those little black flies yeah yeah, yeah. Go, go right through regular screen Windows my screen. concern would be fine organic material clogging up the screen over time so and that's depending... what I was thinking with that's what I was thinking with the silk screen too. I'm like, you could you could get a, a screen definitely fine enough to stop anything to get through, but you'll likely start to affect the drainage capability of, of those holes uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. Dirty's talking uh, here about mosquito dunks for fungus gnats. Um yep. Personally, I've not had a lot of luck with um, with dunks, um, watering them in, um, adding them to the worm bin, for example. Just hasn't worked great for me. Could be the brand that I bought doesn't do a great job. Could be. I, I've used the, I've used them before, and they've been very effective for me. Uh, but it could be the size of the pot as well. Like you, you're 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 not used dealing with pots, right? You're dealing with giant fucking king size beds. So uh, might be a different ball game. True. Very true. Very, very true. Uh, Darcy, the, the, the real way to prevent gnats is to get your watering under control. And, and, and chances are you're never going to get a balloon of them. And that's, that's you you might always have a, a few fungus gnats, but it, the, the, the point in an organic environment is that balance, right? So provided they don't bloom and go out of control, such as like Matt's had with his thrips here, uh, having a couple of thrips isn't a bad bad thing. Having a whole bunch of thrips is a really bad thing. You know, yeah, it's I mean? a check and balance. You want to have a lot of predators, and I do have a lot of predators out there. It's just yeah. it's something they, some reason they just got out of control here. And yeah, whatever. Um, Julian also has a problem with little white bugs that keep eating my plants roots. Uh, uh, little white bugs that keep... tails maybe. Okay, so spring tails go after. Uh, dead organic matter usually and if there's too many of them though they can go after the live stuff hey eh? i i would i but whoop. dude you gotta join the discord we need picks <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> let's you start there you gotta show me so I, like i'm i'm pretty good at identifying insects you yeah, yeah you might have root aphids I, I i'd have to see what you mean by eating your roots and and see what the insects look like uh generally springtails indicate a very healthy ecosystem uh however as matt said if you have an overabundance of them and there's no more food source for them they're going to eat anything they can get their hands on yeah that's so problem. uh generally a very good insect to have but in overabundance it can be an issue we'd have to look at them yeah yeah, we tried hydrogen peroxide and nematodes and still fucking up his garden. Okay. Yeah, dude. Come. Come join. We'll get you Come to me. Sure. Come to me, child. Let me cradle <laughs> you. <laughs> Come to me. Yeah, now. no, we'll we, 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 we definitely. Just looks like little spiders. 
Mm. Eating roots. What would you like? Yeah, pictures. Definitely got to get some pictures. So we can help you out for sure. Yep. That's what we do. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, that's the thing with the Discord. Every Friday night, um, it's uh, it's interactive discussion night. <laughs> Joe, hey, my guy. Um, this this Friday last night, um, I'd actually I want to give a shout out to um the community, um, uh, in particular, a couple guys called Canada Bill and, and Bud Prowler. Um, so. I've recently gone through this whole thing with YouTube. I had that channel strike. I said, oh, fuck, I was going to walk away. Uh, we'll just drop an F bombs here left and right. It's all right, though. We're relaxed. Um, and and these, these guys, members of the community, saw I was really bummed by this and did some really awesome stuff and got me a bunch of really nice gifts, not to including a fantastic um, dab rig um, custom made from uh, uh, Haken's uh, father who does glass, glass blowing. So look for that. I, I'm going to do like a cool little photo shoot on the uh, Instagram. Uh, I'll probably post something on YouTube, a short as well. But, uh, you know, on top of that, cool other things like um, this Mandalorian potato head. So thank you guys. You certainly <laughs> cheered me up. And um, you know, it's 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 kind of ironic because I had a few days ago just I'd made the decision to just turn around and say screw this and just come on back and, and keep doing this stuff because I mean for everybody here and everybody who's who supported me and stuff, it's it's become a bigger thing. So I can't stop this train now, man. Um and I love all you guys are super awesome. Certainly wouldn't be here without uh, the support of the community. So absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, the and Grove then. bags are awesome. I do love the Grove bags. I got a, sh a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll never I'll never go back to to curing without them. To be honest, because I'm uh, I was explaining this last night. I'm I'm a huge dummy when it comes to curing. I'll often be burping jars and just leave them overnight open not thinking about it i'll get stoned i'll go to sleep i'll wake up the next morning come into my living room and the whole place smells like weed because i forgot to close my jars and they're now over dried uh i i do that all the time or i forget to burp them for a day uh, you know like this is dummy free you just put it in the corner for four weeks you know five weeks and then uh jar it and that's how i long term so i still long term store in jars uh, but Grove bags are the entire curing process for me. Yeah. Thoughts on how to use Groves? Throw a mini in there. Oh, later, Norma. Heat seal and call it a day. I don't know what you mean by mini there, Crispy. So, hmm. But if, if you've got your butt in, in the right range and whatnot, um, like perfect for that man you don't really have to do anything other than steal oh hydrometer yeah 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 yeah. oh yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah. um yeah honestly though now i don't think you really need to uh, unless you're still trying to check on the moisture but i just trust the Listen, bag now, man. If, i think it's still a great idea if you're still figuring out the drawing curing process it's excellent to keep an eye on where things are at or if you just want to pat yourself on the back for a good job done and you know it's going to be right on point and you want to see it go ahead and do it <laughs> uh but it, it, I, I mean at, for myself i don't do it because i know when i'm pulling my weed out that it's at the right point because it's, how and it's magnificent it. too man i mean it, it's just thing quite as cool as opening that girl bag for the first time after three four weeks just, and it's uh, just like whack and especially like if you've forgotten about it too, which is the ideal scenario with Grove with Grove bags, is you just kind of put it in a corner and you absolutely forget about it for six weeks, and then you come back and you're like, oh yeah, that bag, and then you open it and it's just a heavenly experience. Jim, smart poker, which I would just like to point out is a fantastic uh, username, just mentioned something called the Canatrol. Let's talk. Let's talk control for a minute. Let's talk fridge drying for a minute. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, that's the repurposed cigar humidifier fridge, right? Yeah. yeah, and I've heard great things about them. I just I know they come with that heavy price tag, too. So, uh, uh troll, if you are watching, uh, I'd be more than happy to run some tests for you, um, yep. prove out the fantasticness of your device. But let's say you don't have that kind of money and you're somewhat. Uh, 
good with you know your hands and have access to an old refrigerator our good friend was by the name of big smoke on the discord actually did just that he got a hold of an industrial cooler from a um it used one it used to be in a diner or something i'm not sure exactly yeah it's like where. a it's like a an industrial fridge so it's it's yeah. a big, big pop cooler kind of thing yeah. right top yeah. to bottom like six shelves uh big fan glass, at door, the top, glass door fridge full glass door fridge and whatnot and he got this thing set up with some temperature and humidity controls and basically turned that thing into a a can of troll itself and had some really great success with it. I know he had some ups and downs and lefts and rights with it um, in the learning process, but overall, super cool, man. And well, and, and I've it. also I've also had good uh, uh, I've seen and experienced good results with somebody who uses one of those herbs now stackable dryers. Yeah, which runs at temperatures and humidity levels, which absolutely frighten me to death. But the flower comes out. So Absolutely. how can you argue against it, right? Wine fridge works great. I, I had a wine fridge uh, back in the day as well. It works fantastic. Yeah, it's you got to have something that uh, does. Was it the defrost that does its own defrost cycle? It, it, I think that's what it is. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Uh, I wish Big Smoke was here. He could clarify in the chat. Um, Smart Poker, dude, you got a YouTube channel. We should chat. We should definitely talk. Yeah, basically, what you're what you're talking about is uh, like a coil that heats up and melts off the condensation. They only use the mini fridge as a vessel for their vapor troll technology. There you go, vapor troll, vapor troll technology. I love marketing terms. Kind of troll, vapor troll. Yeah, there you go. LA proper has entered the chat, ladies and gentlemen. So, Proper's nuts. I'm just going to say that. Oh, he's absolutely insane. The only guy I know who did a 250 plant pheno hunt in a normal sized dwelling. Well, no, one of the wings of a large. Oh, right. Sorry. The estate. Yeah. In the California hills. Dirty Ho, I am not quitting YouTube. No, nope. I, I said nope. no. This community means way too much, man, and people sure let me know. So, uh, hell with it. Hell with the views. But, but the let me let me tell you this: it's not like the boy who cried wolf situation where you had a guy who was like, "I'm quitting," so that people tell me not to quit. No, he was legit quitting. He was, but he's not anymore. No, because the reasons. Because community the the community that we have here is unlike anything else man everybody is so supportive of everybody else um we, guys we, we had a community member who who's recently gone in the hospital um for cancer and everybody stepped up we did a little raffle uh for the great pumpkin so um, top off on this year's great pumpkin she came in at a a less than amazing 58 pounds so uh, I, was, you know what? I was calling the lower ends too. As soon as I saw the finished pumpkin pick, I was like, that ain't a big pumpkin. Yeah. No, sir. I mean, it's still a big pumpkin. Don't get me wrong, but it's not a, uh, yeah. So anyway, we did, we did a raffle based on the weight of the great pumpkin and stuff. Yes. Boy, Laddie thief won. And, um, rather than taking the prize money, cause everybody threw a bunch of money in and raffle and stuff to, to get this. Uh, he just turned around and said, no, you just put that back on top. I don't need that prize money. So we, we raised a bunch of money to help a friend in need. And good it's just, man, Laddie thief. That's good what the man. community does, man. We just help each yep. other out. So mama yep. Kush. guys, if you haven't seen, we did mama Kush with meet the grower not too long ago. We're going to bring, bring in meet the grower back too. And, and I'm sure everybody's going to love the Hollywood squares coming back too. Um, Rooster doesn't know. I haven't talked to him, but yeah, we're going to bring that back as well. Everything's coming back. The hell yeah. is it? If you, if you, back. If you guys, if you guys haven't seen Hollywood squares, uh, absolutely check it out. It's, it's a blast, man. Tons of fun. A lot of smart asses all being smart alecky. Very much you know? so. Very much so. Well, just smart Alex. Yeah, it's smart poker. Come and join the Discord, dude. Let's keep talking, man. 
yeah. definitely keep talking and stuff absolutely yeah every everybody should be on the discord because eventually then if we get enough people over there we don't even have to do youtube we just hang out on there right so and that's the good time man. like you say friday nights friday nights is when it's happening over yeah, in the every discord. friday every friday we have an interactive discussion guys we we talk about new plant stuff uh we live we have demos weekly news our um, changing bodies there's games yep live games. games hosted live by games Nintendo. Live we, games about changing bodies. We no, wait, we have fire, it That's not fireside it. chats with Wicked Chronic. I love the fireside chats, man. Wicked. Yeah. Let's let's talk about Wicked. Wicked is a super cool uh, New England boy with long hair who looks like a surfer, and uh, he knows more about plants than the majority of the people in this room combined. I would say that's, that that's, that's Wicked. Correct. Yeah, that's Wicked for you. Yeah. So absolutely. absolutely. He's, uh, he's a research junkie, I think. He likes to he likes to figure things out. Absolutely. We, so we much think. props to him. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. man. He he brings these great chats on uh, on different strains and stuff, told us the history of things, um, like, like chem dog and whatnot. That's I love the chem dog story, it's fantastic. And we record these guys, so if you're a member of the Discord, you can go back, you can watch these past chats and learn about uh, I think it was Blue Dream we did recently and whatnot. Uh, yeah, yeah, learn how to make all sorts of natural KNF inputs with UT, learn yep. how to but- learn how to butcher your plants with me, you yep. know. Learn how to build a, an organic soil with Matt. Yeah. You got all sorts of fun, cool, really hip stuff happening. We're a couple of wild and crazy guys, and we got the good people all around us. Uh, Darcy Potter Potter, any leads on an organic nutrients in northern Alberta that uh, I can or should order? Um, looking for good crab or oyster shell flour. Uh, yeah, um, so I would point you right at Black Swallow. Um, their their shipping is really good for what they're sending you like you're gonna pay a bit for shipping but when you get 50 pounds of of dry amendments and whatnot it costs you 35 bucks it's not a big thing um so i would definitely point you towards those guys um you like get the basalt rock dust get your osf get your crab meal all that stuff black swallow 100 percent. all yeah, if you're looking stuff. if you're looking for bulk individual component uh material black swallow is probably the most complete uh unit that you can shop from uh, jason's asking is it worth doing living soil in 10 gallon pots absolutely sir 100 percent. the the big thing is it's the amending right um you're not you're not doing no till you you're gonna take you're gonna dump you're gonna re-amend uh yep, you can exactly. cheat around that a little bit with an earth box though yep uh but i i mean i do technically so i do a living soil in 10 gallon pots all the fucking time yeah. Uh, and basically what I have is I have a big uh, recycling reservoir of soil that I re-amend and rebuild, but it maintains that same bacterial uh, uh, inoculated form and function. Yeah, but yeah, I, re- I recycle hundreds and hundreds of gallons of soil all year long. Yeah, for sure. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. There's uh, that, that's the biggest thing. When you're doing organics, you can you can do it smaller. You just have to work more to keep the soil yep. in check. Um, the bigger you go, the bigger your fish tank is, and that's what I like if, about if those, it's your uh, if it's your first if it's your first time, the bigger it is, the easier of a time you're gonna have because there's again there's a there's just more of a buffer. There's 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 going to be more nutrients in there for your plant to draw from. There's going to be uh, m- more of uh, you can fuck up harder with a with a bigger pot. Yes, with absolutely. A, yeah. S- the smaller your pot, the smaller your pot size, the less the margin for error becomes. Yeah. Absolutely. And with organics, having to do that plan ahead, um, that's that's really where the bigger containers come in handy. Um, but again, earth boxes and sips and whatnot, like those five gallons. I, I dropped a short on how to build these five gallons here behind yep. me. Um, you know, they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. If you want to have if you're just looking to grow organic, you want to have a really easy time. Uh, I, I, I highly recommend uh, one of our sponsors, Green Rush Nutrients. Uh, it is super, super easy to turn over plants uh, and and feed like a liquid diet. Um, ha- there is some salts, though, that we discovered in it, right? Let's yeah, talk I mean, about up some salts, right? 
So Epsom so salts, Epsom, there. go ahead. It, well, I, Epsom salts are a, a very, very effective way of getting magnesium into your, into your soil, uh, readily available magnesium. However, it's, it is, it is binded as a salt. And so it can build up in your soil. So you have to, you have to keep that in mind, uh, when using, uh, Epsom salts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but definitely, um, magnesium and sulfur. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anytime somebody mentions sulfur, proper ears perk up. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. so so talking uh, sips again there. Um, the thing about organics, and I'm going to bring this back to what we were talking about at the beginning of uh, the stream here, was watering. Um, in order yeah. to have organics run and work effectively, you need to maintain moisture in that proper range for microbes to be happy and thrive and do all the things that you want them to do. So having a sip in a smaller container allows you to maintain the water in a better fashion, and therefore you're going to have less chance for swings because having that hard dry down in an organic system can not only make things go dormant, kill off all of your life and whatnot, it can also concentrate um, minerals in weird ways. So when you do water again, you've got potential issues, right? Yeah, it can, it, it can happen for sure. Um, not to say that I don't necessarily recommend a dry back from time to time, even in an organic environment. You can you can rebuild the microbes with a good tea uh, if you have to. Um, and, and that's like I'm saying, you'll, you'll have cases of, you know, root death where you'll, you'll have to dry back it in order to, 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 to get that plant to resuscitate itself and, and grow new roots. Um, you just need to keep that in mind and build back up that, that, that microbial base. Yeah. Great ways to add microbes back in. I mean, you get microbes in a bottle, things like, um, microbial mass. Yeah. I haven't talked about those guys in a bottle gets to turn somewhere, but, uh, great in a bottle, right? It's like, it's yeah. there, you buy it off the shelf. It's not the cheapest stuff, but I will highly, highly recommend it. Um, that stuff yeah. works really well, but it if works. you've got a little yeah. bit of time, they, they sorry go ahead i was just say if you got a little bit of time and you get some rice and some milk you can make labs yep which are highly effective easy to make and fun little science experiments so yeah or you can just go out and collect some leaf mold get some leaf mold absolutely oil that's that's got the whole uh, if, if you're looking for really uh, uh microorganisms that are that are native to your area uh that's a great inoculum little IMO collection. Yep. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, again, circling back, we, we did all this this summer. So we've got videos on the Discord that talk all about this sort of thing, how to build your own soil using leaf mold, how to do KNF stuff like uh, making your labs, uh, making WCP. Um, how, to, how to make yourself sick uh, churning beefaroni into soil. Yeah, yeah. That type of stuff. You know? Yeah, so of course, most of us in making our soil went and did normal stuff. Tim had to go insane. And I I, I made Bokashi compost using Bokashi brand to break down the stuff in an anaerobic environment, right? Things like some grass clippings and some pumpkin leaves and, and some other green leafy material. And things that make a, sense. I did a bucket with, with like flowers and fruit and stuff. And you know, I, I that's, that's what I'm doing. That stuff stank really bad. It was, it's, it's actually good now once you let that stuff sit and Tim went and did it with beefaroni. I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. That video no, I regret. I'm filled, I'm filled, I'm filled, filled with regret um but uh but the, the 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 plant's doing all right man a little bit of a mutant but uh she's she's doing okay is there a certain kind of bokashi to look for uh yeah so you you, you want to look for bokashi bran ideally um but you can make your own relatively easily as well mama kush our man ut is an expert at that and he can he can help you through that process as well. We got we got videos. I, mean, okay, I know I know I know you're on the Discord. The the, the process is super simple. Yep. Rice in, into into a mason jar. You take some rice, put it in a mason jar. Add some water. You shake, shake, shake. Get rid of the rice. Keep the water. Let that sit and culture for a few days, depending on temperature and a couple other things. It might take a bit longer. Add in a gallon of milk. Let that sit again for a few more days. 
wait until it separates and you get some funky cloudy curd sitting on top. Remove that. Remove the, the layer of liquid from the middle, which is absolutely simple to do. And now you have labs. Uh, Hagen, yes, Gatorade, but specifically Gatorade Zero. Because <laughs> there's, uh, there's more potassium and phosphorus in it than regular Gatorade. So, uh, yeah. Going through the ingredients, it, it was interesting. Yeah. So then yeah. once you've made that labs, you take in super saturated, mix it one-to-one weight-wise with um, molasses, right? And that's going to cause all these microbes to go dormant. And you take and then soak that into bran. And now you have Bokashi bran. It's, it's like that simple. And the stuff works amazing to break down um, organic matter. Yeah. It it Bokashi smells nice, but Bokashi compost is foul. God, it's foul. so stinky. It's, it is foul poison. If foul. you're going to do it, just don't open it up in the house if the wife is around, especially. Um, or if, if if you are the wife and your husband is around and you're okay with the smell and your husband, I don't, whatever. We, we're not discriminating. It doesn't matter. Just be careful with the Bokashi, especially if you're Bokashi and beefaroni. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking yeah. gross man i do have a video up on the discord of of me churning that bokashi beefaroni and, and gagging while i do it so <laughs> i got some on me <laughs> it was so gross man it was yeah. so gross and it clings to uh, um, yeah. uh, coconut water uh darcy coconut water is absolutely amazing to use like, think about what what coconuts are right they're the biggest seed on the planet so the stuff that they have inside them is absolutely amazing to feed to your plants. It's just not the cheapest. So um, I played around with coconut water powder, which seemed to be yeah. fairly effective. The problem with that stuff is it's exceptionally absorptive of uh, moisture. And the bag got left open just a little bit and just sucked all the moisture out into the same powder. Thing, same thing happens with dried aloe flakes, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they suck all the moisture back in. Yeah. Surprised wife hasn't said anything about the smell. Fingers crossed, Dave. Honestly, once once the microbes start actually really getting at it and the fungus starts, the the activity starts happening in the soil, the smell goes away. So my yeah. uh, uh, beefaroni pot doesn't stink at all. And all that's in it is cocoa, perlite, and fucking beefaroni. And it doesn't smell. So... Yeah, it's 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 indicative of it being digested and 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 going through the process now. Yeah, but well, you got to be the timing. Careful, I think though. I got just right on that actually. Yeah, you got to be careful with the bokashi, um, and you have to make sure you uh, mature it out of your bokashi bucket into um, soil or a cocoa pea or cocoa or peat or whatever. Um, and it's going to be super acidic at first. So that stuff, once it breaks down, it's become less acidic. So if you are using that stuff, just be mindful of your soil pH. The smell calmed the way down. Yeah. 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 Mine took about a month outside before I brought it in. Uh, a month after mixing it with the cocoa, uh, I, I left it outside to, to cook off yeah. and then brought it in and exposed the plant to it. Well, what we found too was temperature environment locally also seems to make a difference. Uh, oh. Where our boy Tramp, who's down in uh, uh, Nevada, uh, he he was having incredible um, luck with his compost. He went crazy. He yeah. went crazy. Yeah. Watching from Chim Jail. Nice. That's what I was doing this morning, Bob's. Yes, salute you, sir. Or Bob's yeah. cousin, rather. Well, yeah, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> cousin Earl. Uh, there you go. There you go. All right. So what's everybody smoking on tonight? I've got some uh, fantastic Cushmans here in the vape pen, which I just yeah. I was hitting. Uh, I was hitting my my infamous gelato mint, uh, but rosin. And then right before that, I smoked some Ooh. Billy's Fino, which is the animal face cookies uh, that I was raving about there. The pine pine tar flavor. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, Julian just posted a picture on the Discord. We're going to do some live troubleshooting potentially here. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, the here. white bug. Okay, where did you uh, post it, Julian? Let's see here. Let Main chat. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, those look like good guys to me. Yeah, 
Stratiolapsimitus. Yes, sir. Exactly. Stratiolapsimitus, or as I know them, scimitar strats. Um, here, let me it share this. Sounds screen. cool, right? Because like totally scimitar sounds cool. slice, slice. So yeah, those are more more than likely uh, actually predator mites that have bloomed. Now, if you have that many, the question to ask yourself is, what are they feeding on? Yep. Yeah. President. President. Yeah. The presidents of the bugs. No. The presence of a high amount of predators um, is going to happen when you have a bloom of bad things, right? Because nature yep. is going to start to try and balance itself out. That's the beauty of things. So these guys are awesome to have for sure. Like these, these guys are wicked, wicked. Um, are you noticing any issues on your leaves or with the plants themselves? Anything that would cause um, concern? Yes, so. Somebody's having some turt mints cookies. Yeah. Turt mints. Turt mints is fantastic. Hell yeah, dude. Well, Darcy's smoking some wedding cake. Mama Kush is on the do si do Love the dosey. Matt Hamcott's on the gelato. <laughs> or are you just laughing at me because I'm always on gelato? I can't help that I like, honestly, uh, gelato in all forms. So, like, I'm a big fan of gelato 33. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the gelato mint that I always grab. Uh, big fan of sunset sherbet. Uh, basically, like, any any gelato cross I tend to be, tends to be right up my alley. Gelato bubblegum. <laughs> Honey crisp. Apple fritter crust with runts. That sounds good, Cam. Oh, Jason's got some crabby kush. There you oh, go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. If you guys aren't familiar um, with the crabby kush, um, maybe you haven't been following the channel for that long, for example. Uh, Tim uh, bred out uh, a very, very special strain of OG kush. Um, worked it for a long time, isolating an absolutely magnificent uh, vino of it. Uh, named the Krabby Kush. She shared that out with me. I've grown. I've got it growing actually right now. There you go. Um, it's 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 God. It stinks, <laughs> but in a it good way. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I mean, you you describe it. Um... I describe it as cat piss and lavender. Uh, some people are saying like it's got a meaty terp, which I agree. Yeah, I, I get roast beef off the dabs and stuff. Yeah, but it's, roast, it's... Beef, roast beef. It's got some golden tobacco to it as well. It's got uh, yeah. it's it's a very rich, complex ecosystem of stank, is what it is, uh, and it's unlike any OG Kush that anyone's ever tried. I assure you that. Yeah. Yeah, Mama Kush, we got to get you growing some of that crabby. Um, Julian, I think you're overwatering, mm -hmm. my friend. So, um, if your roots are looking all kind of funky, um, your your plants are going yellow and droopy, um, you're probably overwatering. So, and they're always by my roots. Okay, so you can't see your roots; they're under soil. So. Are you making the assumption that they're eating your roots just because there's a lot of mites? Yeah. I'm not trying to be facetious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's... It, Matt's absolutely right. What, what you're seeing is probably an indication of overwatering, which probably caused a, a, a bloom, some type of insect bloom that allowed those predators to also bloom. Yeah. What's up, Chris? Plus. Little flank stick. <laughs> but Julian, we'll figure it out, man. Share some uh, some pics of the uh, of the plant on the Discord, or you can just DM them to me or Matt, uh, and we'll figure it out. We'll we'll help you for sure. Yep. Or just throw stuff up in the uh, Grow Guidance channel. There, um, tons of help. Um, yeah. yeah. Julian, one of us we'll, is usually around to help, but yeah, um, honestly, man, I'm I'm on like every single day. Like it's not. We're not like uh, people who are like, oh, yeah, like, come on to our Discord and then we're not available. We're always fucking available. Just at me and I'll reply within moments. Yeah. Unless, you know, we're working or something yeah. like that. Uh, Julian, when I pull them out and yes, I'm guessing that's why. I'm... Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I so think you, 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 you I, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with Matt's diagnosis. It's probably a watering problem. That watering problem probably resulted in a bloom of fungus gnat larvae or nematodes or something to that effect, so that the predator mites also bloomed, and that's why you're seeing a lot of them. Hey, growers. I really got to start continuously hitting this pen. <laughs> Uh, woo. hey thanks ken but it's not just us man like for sure there's there's oh yeah dude, guys dude, there's, on there. again a dozen other guys that are help out there helping daily that really know their business as well better than matt or i so you overwatered your natural grow off plants i think most of us did <laughs> i think most of us did yeah, mine's doing actually really good. I'm actually quite quite pleased with it and stuff. So. Do, do, should, do, should, do you want me to go get mine? You can see the difference between the two. It's pretty wild. Pull mine out. I'm gonna pull it out live on air, guys. Hold on a second. This is this is where the thing goes. Actually, you know, I'll wait for Tim to come back and entertain you guys, and then I'll get mine out because I can. It's right there. I'll have to move my giant tobacco plant. So if if you're not familiar, this this is a tobacco plant right here uh absolutely super cool plant huge leaves on it um there you go so this is my leaf mold plant so this is done with uh a third a third a third style mix but one third of it is leaf molds okay it's doing okay it's got a couple of deficiencies going on but it'll 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 pull through that i'm not too worried pull through and when we talk leaf mold mix he went and actually just got some leaf mold from the forest and used that as a, a nutrient base for mixing his soil and you know, again the videos are set for that uh, on the discord this fruit cake right here <laughs> Look at that lives thing. off of beefaroni and she's a fucking she's out of her mind and, uh, and I hear you say about a little muty eh she, oh yeah, she's super muty and weird and like living off of beefaroni, clearly. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's time to clean her up. I think I'll do that now as we talk. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna get I'm gonna give a drop, a drop of a hint for the ANGO. So and part part of the fun with the all natural grow off that we're doing here, guys, is nobody knows what the strain is, uh, except save a few people. Tim and I both know uh, the breeder Wildwood. Shout out, um, oh, yeah. long time supporter, um, and and can of Bill managed to figure it out after I saucily dropped a hint one night in chat. There, um, nobody else picked up on it. Like I was blatant about it too. Anyway, so so for those participating, um, the two strains. The, the 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 last word in each name is the same. That's probably going to give it away. But anyway, so there you oh, go. There's their hint, guys. You know what? I'm going to take it back. It still smells. <laughs> All that moving around, eh? Now that it's in my fucking lap. Yeah, guys. It's still stanky. It smells but like stinky beef room. It's, uh, it's got some big, like... Thick, thick, thick leaf feeders here. Like, what is going on with this plant? That's, ins that's insane, man. It's it, stupid. What we're not realizing is there's apparently a terribly large amount of growth hormones in uh, beefaroni. Hold on a second. Let me, let, well, and, let me and grab mine here. To be fair, it's gotten a fair amount of Gatorade. And I will, I will concede that when it was still in a solo cup, I gave it a bit of uh, filter sludge from my from my fish aquarium, fish but that's all it's had. Oh wait, no, it had a leaf mold foliar spray when it was oh, in the yeah. solar solo yeah, cup yeah. as well. Yeah, but yeah. since going in this ten gal, it has not had anything but Gatorade, water, and the beefaroni that's inside it, which is kind of frightening. show them off yeah well i mean the difference between the two is pretty striking well there you go so 
all this thing has had to eat. It's not looking too bad. It's definitely not looking as good as yours, man. This is but, this is nuts, dude. dude it's that's like crazy. thick, dense leaf too, like really dense, yeah. thick stuff. So yeah, this has just been fed with the uh, the Bokashi bucket, um, and that was uh, grass clippings, cannabis uh, yep. leaves. Um, I had some uh, pumpkin leaves in there, uh, uh, some uh, lettuce leaves, like just leafy greens. That's it. That's all I put in there. And that's all this has had. So, and again, it's got some muty leaves and stuff, some little tree fronds here and whatnot. But she's doing good. She looks super healthy, right? And again, guys, it, this has virtually cost me nothing to do other than the, the cocoa and peat, right? And and the perlite, right? And that's what really allowed for this grow off was people, you, you could go to the grow store and get some base medium cocoa or peat, uh, perlite, and aeration. And we allow people to do normal um, IPM methods because we don't want anybody losing plants. Yeah, Doing we don't want bug, bug infestations just for the sake of bug infestations. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's back down. Drop me in, wrecking anything. Successful. Hey, anyway, so yeah, this thing is uh, this thing's fucked up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Nice, we're hitting the big time. We've got we got porn spam in the chat. There you oh, go. Oh, hey, Mister Westport, right. and of course Chad Westport. How's it going, Chad? Uh, let's. All sorts of cool folks making it in here. 69 girls XYZ was hidden. Why? Whatever could have been wrong with that? Yes, you're spamming the chat. All right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Celebs in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Chad Westport is one of my favorite people on YouTube. Freaking awesome guy. <laughs> I don't know, Chad. I mean, let's let's face it. You do draw a certain type of audience. So, Chad, don't you have an OnlyFans yet? <laughs> Better than poor. You grow wheat. There you go. Yet the man keeps trying to bring me down. Yeah, what do you do? We're looking pretty good. I'm uh, I'm ready to clone this fucker. <laughs> Jesus, <Chad. laughs> So there you go, folks. If you want to find Chad on OnlyFans, head over to Chad Westpork. <laughs> Westpork. <laughs> uh, this must be that must be that fancy giggle weed that I'm smoking. All right. <laughs> Comey's here for 10 minutes at a time. East Pork. East Pork. Oh, Chad, you should come join us in the chat here, man. I send you a link if you're down. <laughs> like, oh, that's hilarious, man. Too funny. Too funny. Let's see here. Ready. Let's see if we can coax Mr. Westport to come and join us. What are you coaxing? Doing a, doing a little stroke here. Chad. Chad, I'm sending you a link, man. There we go. It's up to you if you want to come and join us, of course. No pressure, but pressure. There we go, setting up the camera. Hot damn. Dingleberries. What oh, was was Scott Bud Lovenut being nice in the chat? It's a family oh, show, you know. I didn't I didn't do that. Did I do something? It said you deleted message I didn't, deleted. Did you? I didn't you must have. I'm sorry, Scott. I didn't mean to do that. He was just saying LMAO. I, uh, like, I must have accidentally clicked the phone or something. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry, right. Scott. We've we've remoderated you, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, try typing again, dude. So. <laughs> Your hair's receding and you can live vicariously through. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. We're waiting for Chad Rusport to enter the chat. All right. So okay. Know, well, Dabby, 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 Dabby. I've seen people kind of come in, people go in. Yeah. Hey, have you guys ever monster crop budding clones back to veg? Um. Do, do I go on my rants, Matt, or do you want to do it for me? I can I can I go? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So monster cropping is one of those techniques that um, it's good to understand, but you should only ever do it if you absolutely have to, because it's a very long and arduous process and sometimes it can fail and you can lose said genetics. So um, I'm of the opinion, always be clone in ABC. That's principle I live by always taking clones. Um, but Sometimes again, shit happens and you end up taking a cut three weeks into flower. So it totally works. Um, you treat it just like you would a normal clone. But the thing is, you are going to get some weird ass growth. Like it's going to sit, it'll root, it'll start growing. And then it's going to get all funky. It's um, going to be so uh, like if you've ever seen a revegged plant, that's what to expect, but an even slower process. Like it's a, you're, you're revegging a cut. Uh, so it's, it's long, it's messy. And it's what I call a last resort only to save the cut. Otherwise do your due diligence, take your cuts before flipping and you never have to go through that ugly process. Absolutely. I can THC. That's, that's it. Don't enjoy doing it, but you can do it. <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, Matt, I just sent you a Zoom link, too, if you want to come jump in with us. So, Yeah, sorry about that, Scott. That's just my sausage fingers against my phone. <laughs> I had to reload the video, and I probably hit your name and was like, oh, he's a bad guy. <laughs> I don't even know how it happened, so, yeah. All right. So, uh, it's an entertain the crowd for me. I'm going to grab a beverage. Hmm. Is this uh, is this Pedro's? Yeah, so Tanya rolled up a, a joint of Pedro's sweet sativa, which is really nice. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably end up doing a review on it on the uh, tacos um, and toks eventually. Too it's a really times. nice daytime smoke. There's like no burnout on it, but it's it it, it hits a bit a bit harder than its percentage so to speak it's a low percentage weed that hits it's above it weight its weight class that's the other thing i would recommend to folks if ever you're out there shopping don't don't just buy weed based on it being high in thc no uh, no so it's very Terpenes. rarely an indicator of of the the high that you're going to get off of it I always say, just show me the terpenes. I want to see the terpenes on the pack. That's what's going to tell me. But generally, I don't buy much from the dispos. Um, Tim, Tim, Tim's a flavor hunter, seeker. Well, I'm a variety hunter as well, right? So, like, I, I've always been a, a terp hunter. I'm always after interesting and unique terpene profiles, aromas. Uh, but I like to have, you know... 15 different weeds in, in in my pharmacy so that i can rotate out and never get you know tired of, of a, a particular strain i i used to have the that amount covered in my own grows but not so much with the the whole breeding seeds thing makes it a bit more difficult i'm just getting back into rotation now getting back into rotation rotation yeah. Read the chat here. So, fortunately, I can THC is on the road right now. He can't join us. So, that's all right. We, we did a chat with him and I not too long ago. Um, meet the grower. Yep. Great there chat. Great chat. Hell of a nice guy. If you haven't seen his, his channel, he's, he's yeah. been hanging out with a bunch of cool dudes lately. It's nice being in Colorado with one of those I guys. Do, I do that. I can, I can THC. I call that a salad. When you're rolling a salad, several strains at once. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Hillbilly. He's, that's that's where I first heard the term. I didn't know if you used it as well. So I've always called that a salad. Okay. Same thing if you're like mixing up hash and weed, that's a that's a salad. Yeah. All right. Let's let's oh, we gotta talk hash for a minute. 
So, so, okay. I, I've been talking about this a little bit before the guys, everybody got together in the community, did an absolutely fantastic thing for me. I, I actually wanted to, you know, um, I, I will show this here eventually, this, this amazing custom built rig. But um, one of the things that was sent along with it was um, the hash basher. So back in the day, back in the day, one of my favorite consumption methods was the hot knife. Because I felt it to be an efficient use of, of my, my cannabis. Um, you know, things were illegal. Hard to get. An eighth had to last a long time sometimes. A couple of weeks even. It was harsh, man. Those were the dark times. <laughs> uh, well, I remember hot knives back when I was like yep. a teenager, but I I never remembered them fondly. Yeah, it was it was always like a last resort thing. Like, oh, there's like you said, like not much. Like, how can we get high in a instant? Yeah. Uh, so same thing with hash too. Yeah. There we go, chat. Sit in the chat. So it's a poor, a poor man's uh, rosin press, as it were. Um, and ladies yeah. and gentlemen, uh, the man, the myth, the pseudo Mexican. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> that's from a private uh, primus album. In case anybody's wondering. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Chad Westport. What's up? Oh, geez. Camera. Hello. <laughs> Camera. We're technically challenged. Are we there yet? Okay. Almost, here. There yeah. we go. There, we go. there he is. I love hearing hot knives, too. I'm a, <laughs> I am remember the days of the hot knives. Yes. I, I remember oh. moving into a few apartments, too, in Seattle. And you know how, like, all the cupboards have that little lip on them? Yeah finding a few different hot knives up there before yeah, i was sure. like i know what the last person did that's yes. awesome that's awesome so so what was sent to me was part of uh you know this this amazingly cool custom dab ring was this this hash basher so it looks like a normal bowl but instead of having a hole in the middle there's there's three holes on the rim of the bowl and the bowl itself is just a bowl Okay, you take and you place this into your dab rig like you normally would, just a normal banger. And instead of fire or something like that, you take a glass rod. Uh, um, uh, what, what was he calling them yesterday? Fuck, I can't remember now. Um, anyway, it's a glass rod, and you heat the glass rod up with a torch and you use that to, to smash the hash with. And let me tell you, old school, do you got one of them there? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. See, he knows. Nice little. Nice little. Why am I surprised? <laughs> Very One or a paddle. Paddle. There you go. Perfectly. Perfectly awesome. Well, yeah, the, the bowl itself, it's kind of designed like a like an old hookah bowl type of yeah. thing. Yeah. No, like it's an actual bowl with just some holes it, around it. It, it, it. I felt elevated today getting to enjoy this. And it, it was absolutely magnificent because hash is such a treat. Especially mm. good hash. Especially, you, you took the words as right out of my mouth. Good hash, man. When you find good hash, oh. Wait, now, what kind of hash are you guys talking about, though? Like a dry sift, or is this like the pressed black stuff? Or uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna give. A, I'll give a quick shout out to my buddy uh, Rosathon on the Discord or uh, Homegrown Montreal, Homegrown MTL on Instagram. Uh, he makes some of the best hash in Canada, I'm going to say, but he does uh, Frenchy bottle textile nice. uh, and, and does the temple balls and he ages them. And I don't think I've had a better hashish uh, before. That's, hey, that's, a, that's, a one. Yeah, I, that's I got, where my heart's at, too. Definitely I've, is. I've been, digging into, I've been digging into one that he gave me, but it's all like broken up now, but it's still just shining and glistening in there. And it's, oh, yeah. It's just, but like the rich, his apartment smells of rich mahogany and he has many leather bound books. <laughs> you know, that, that type of smell. Yeah. Oh, dude. Now, is yeah. that. Is that something that you guys can actually find in a dispensary there? Because it's like a non-existent product here. Well, yeah. uh, so I, I, I got some oak barrel aged hash. Uh, 1964, I believe is the name of the company up okay. here on um, the LP. <laughs> so, hey, I'll give a shout out. So you might as well plug the guys. Hey, YouTube's going to put the advertisement on here anyway. I, I thought you were saying it, it was going to be. It was from 1964. I was like, holy no, 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 no. Uh, Yeah, so they do an the oak closest, barrel aged hash. The closest hash, thing is... that I've gotten similar is this uh, ice water hash, they call it. But it's basically like 
bubble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rosin. Oh, I see the shine. Uh, it's yeah. very, very nice, but it's expensive to to procure uh, on the legal market. Okay. Okay. I've yeah. uh, been getting some uh, Lebanese black hash. Um, like, I can't remember the name of the company, um, but it's it is just like like soft, sticky tar, just super earthy, pungent, dank smelling. It absolutely amazing stuff. So, um, so you you make temple balls as well, Chad? That's where it's at. Yeah, I do. I, I play around with it. Uh, I'm a novice, but you know. It's still good hash at the end. How, one of the how, things, long, how long are you aging them generally before you break in? Uh, six months to a year. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, that's, that's the, that's the thing. You got to let them sit. You know, I also, I tried to make like numerous little ones though, to like hedge my bets like this, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, a good, good little thing, but what six, one 22. So yeah, just, Make a whole bunch of little ones to fight this is, the urge. This, this, this was a two-year-old ball before I cut into it. Proper, and, man. Dude, I, I, well, I brought this to Alberta, and Matt and I both tried it because uh, it was such a special treat. But yeah. Oh, it's so melty. So melty. Oh, it's oh. just, it's, it's the most absurdly good hash I've had in yeah. ages. But, you know, I think that's the thing that I'm really starting to find here about the, the legal market in Canada is there's a couple producers who are who are really getting the A plus on the hash game. And I mean, I'm, I'm going to speak out against flour because I find that um, corporate growing, growing flour is just it's, it's missing that that craft market touch. Um, you know, it's not that there's not good producers like tribal and that that um, gelato mint. Um, you said that you said the word right there, though, that craft market touch. I think the same thing that we saw happen with shit beer that was prevalent yeah. all throughout the country or the, 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 the continent uh, that shifted and became a, a, a real true craft market. Most of the beers out there are like more of a craft style brew than ever before. And I think we're going to see the same thing happen with 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 hopefully with with cannabis products as yeah. you get that craft market well and that's where i think extracts can really take prevalence um i think i just made a word up uh but it, it, I like it. It. you got yeah, the, the the idea that you know we're not taking maybe this irradiated stuff that's been too dried because of all the reasons we're actually taking the product that is it should be taken you know fresh or uh, dried washed all that stuff to get this magnificent hash and it's in my opinion a magnificent product if you're finding the right stuff you got to hunt around a little bit too yep that's the unfortunate part is the hunt right it's yeah. a costly affair to try and find good product but once you do oh thank goodness for the backup you know if <laughs> if ever you need it what's yeah. the hash market like uh where you're at uh it's it's all you know dabs diamonds and sauce different variations earwax butter shatter um uh, yeah. concentrates though um yeah. high thc and terpenes flavor profile uh you know it's like the black the the shoe has the press stuff it doesn't have the same terpene profile it's not as impactful but i enjoy it much much more uh something again uh, you know we always talk about you know flower and whole plant medicine and there's something magical about it i can't tell you exactly what it is but there is something magic and that's kind of how that hash seems to me too it's like i can't really put my thumb on it but maybe at last i don't know it just seems to be a little bit more of an even adventure than a, kind of a roller coaster but you know with companies too the the concentrates um there's there's a lot less you know man hours there's a lot less touches when you make that and that improves your margin so that's a whole other incentive that you are seeing or going to see hopefully like this kind of renaissance with that because yeah. easier to ship you know there's there's so many advantages to it and i'm saying this as a total flower lover so yeah I, i'm i'm in the same boat so i'm i'm primarily a flower smoker i always will be uh i do like my concentrates from time to time for that you know buffer on a saturday night uh <laughs> but i primarily i smoke flower and that's what i'm looking for that's what we need in the marketplace in order to educate people 
if, well, if, if you're handing a first time smoker some rosin to get high, holy fucking hell, are you uh, throwing them <laughs> on a their coaster ride, right? Like, yes. Give, give them a nice balanced, like, seven percent thc seven percent cbd flower and and let them have a night with their cocktail and they'll be okay you know uh that'll help break this stigma i think uh shoving shoving uh some some greasy rosin in their face and blasting them the first time might be a scary experience well it's the normalization of of cannabis in the society that is starting to happen um, but with that, we get that watered down approach where we're making things like it's the THC vape cart available to market. I'm, I'm sitting here just torquing on this thing, but is this the MP3 of cannabis? Is this, is this the watered down consumer ready version? I mean, it is soccer bombs, man. And I have one myself, so I'm in that category yeah. too, <laughs> but it's, you know, the town I live in, um, you know, when I lived in Seattle, I'll spark up anywhere where I live now, heck no, because the cops will be there in, you know, two seconds. So yeah, vape pens, definitely. I'm glad that they exist, but it's, you know, it's a reconstitution or, you know, they're stripping everything apart and putting it back together. So again, it's like, you are losing some things in the process. Um, oh, but these are, a hundred percent. I think the, the interplay that you see within the, the medicinals, and the, and the terpenes and the cannabinoids once you break that that marriage it's no longer even if you try and reconstitute it afterwards it's it's not the same compound anymore it's not going to be the same for you yeah and i think that's that's where i prefer still like flour and hash rosin and whatnot because it's that's that, that's that full spectrum that real yep. part of the the plant that it isn't broken apart and put back together and again i, I think there's a market for this I, had, I had an i had an interesting thought i think there's something else that is going to vastly improve the legal market in 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 coming years and that's them figuring out how to package it oh uh, yeah sorry i wasn't laughing at you i was laughing at a comment in- <laughs> yeah no, no no i i think i think i think packaging uh is is going to drastically and change it changed i missed the comment guys i don't know yeah uh, stop let's just stop and read the comment <laughs> yeah not, not entirely appropriate but i laughed i'm, I'm still giving them props darcy absolutely freaking hilarious and you're not wrong and i welcome our robot overlords uh, you know you mentioned you know it's come into like the consumer market and like so this is my thing like single dose serving i'm still in the state still federally illegal tons of businesses here are trying to perfect it we know how one beer will affect me matt and timothy so one beer there's a single dose serving it's recognized I can go out to a bar and judge my level of impairment, how much fun I want to have off of that. Cannabis is not that way yet. I can definitely outsmoke, you know, grandma who's never smoked before. Um, But through this stripping and recombination, understanding the endocannabinoid system more, I think they will find that single dose serving. And once they do, it's on because they'll put it in every fucking freaking product they can. Uh, that's really interesting because I, I would think it's more of it's still that individual cannabinoid and what it does for my specific cannabinoid system, mm-hmm. right? Like how it's going to work for me, but having that generalist approach, I think <laughs> absolutely makes sense. And that's probably, yeah, exactly what they're going to be driving to because to have something that's ultimately marketable for everybody you have to have that repeatability to it and this is still not repeatable i mean it's this this i guess is better like just a straight this is just thc and uh, right the, the way i see those are like when if you need a down low situation to just soften yourself a little bit use that you know uh but i wouldn't use that as like my daily driver so to speak you, you yeah you hit it on the head there it doesn't get me to the same place as a proper bowl will sure it'll hold me over but i still want to get home and have that bowl because it is it's different but why there's thc and terpenes too i don't know but it is different you but know the, 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 the other things is no longer the same man it's it's something else entourage effect yes yeah, yeah. entourage effect exactly that 
but I mean, it's, it's accessibility and it's, I mean, I'm sitting here in my basement. I would never light up here in the basement, right? Yeah, my daughter's course. bedroom is sitting right yeah. there and whatnot, but I have no problem with this because it's, there's no smell, there's no residue, there's nothing left. It's just vapor, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Definitely, yeah. definitely has its place. Mm. Absolutely. I'm not going to be a, I'm not going to be a purist or whatever it would be. It definitely yeah. has its place. And to your point of, you know, it's a little bit closer to that single dose serving. It's easier to like titrate or to find the right amount with that. It seems like I could get a more consistent level of impairment for lack of a better word with each toke off of that versus like, if I hit, you know, blue dream or I hit skunk number one, like one toke is kind of going to be different, but with those, it's a little bit easier for those people who are like, Oh, pump the brakes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you know, it's okay. It's 85% THC. It's going to take me four draws off this thing to get nice and ripped. You know, uh, it might take somebody else one or two or, you know, like it's, it depends. I, I feel like that might be an easier way of like individual dosage. But again, I don't consider it a medication in the same way. I, 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 I consider it like, uh, uh, instead of like a complex living, uh, 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 broken down alcohol, it's a distilled alcohol. It's vodka, you know, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's stripped away of all the things that once made it alive and, and it's, it's something else. But it, it, one thing you're missing in that, that breakdown is it's not just vodka. It's flavored no. vodka. It's your yeah. vanilla vodka or your, right. your orange vodka. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's my wife likes these carts. Her and her buddies, they love these yeah. carts because this tastes like cherries or, you know, Absolutely. and that's cool, man. I mean, it makes it so eight, people enjoy 18, it a different way. 18 year old girls everywhere loved Zima back in 1990. <laughs> So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and again, I, I use them as well, right? Like there's a time and a place for them, I think, where it's a, a godsend to have them. However, I, I hope that that's not the future that we're going towards. And I don't think it, it, it is. You know, something you said there, like struck a, or made me question something. So Zima, was it the Zima? <laughs> no, but I was going to say ice me, bro. But no, that's Coolio, <laughs> RIP, RIP Coolio. Um, but so, okay, so it's generally accepted in the States, at least, that you can shop for a THC percentage when it comes to flour. Uh, you can find a lab that's going to give them a higher number. Now, I've never thought about it. Does that apply to cartridges as well? Or is that number, since it's so controlled and, you know, measured out, is that actually a real number, which makes it easier to say, oh, it's 85%, four totes, perfect. Well, I you wonder, do, you I wonder. Can't, because with, with flour, it's, it's averages, right? So you, you, can, you can never get a fully accurate, like this nug is 26.8% THC. You can't right. because the concentrations of that THC vary based on where you're looking on the flower of that plant and where, what level of the plant that flower came off of. So they do an average. They'll do a draw from uh, a certain amount of batches off of that mm -hmm. group and then do an average count based on what they're seeing across those, you know, six different tests that they did on the flower. So well, that's, uh, that's a good way, more effective than being able to cherry pick the tops, hand trim those, and then deliver them to the lab. Not that I've ever seen that in Washington. Um. <laughs> and, and there's, there's some, there's some companies actually here that got in trouble for it as well. Uh, so it's actually kind of strict in Canada as far as the way they test for their, their THC averages. More homogenized. Uh, and, and there were some pretty strict uh, fines uh, put in, if I'm not mistaken, for, for the company yeah. that, was, that was fudging them. Yeah. Good. Because, again, you know, a lot of these programs were enacted because of medical cannabis patients and yep. the medical aspect. So consumer protectionism uh, should be a focus for whatever regulating body it is, you know, tax dollars to the side. Um, I thought this was for the consumer's safety, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and, and it, you see other sad practices that are prevalent with large scale production, like, uh, like a radiation as well, which. Yeah, that's, 
you're like dude uh okay i mean i, w- I wouldn't want to put that in my body and you can you can you can tell what an irradiated weed looks and smells like it's it's not it's not a pleasant thing um doesn't smell like much of anything no exactly it's toasted man it's yeah. uh it's been fried yeah it's too, been fried. It's too, to allow irradiated over over proper um growing processes and whatnot it's that that's what frustrates me about the legal market and whatnot it's like okay well you can still use it just you know nuke it first so right again and that's not what the consumer wants that's what they'll buy if that's the only thing they have access to but that's not what they want and well and, and i think that's where consumer education comes into play right like the more educated the consumer becomes the less that shit is going to float with us uh, yes. The problem is, is for the, the new users, the ones who are looking into, um, you know, perhaps medical or, or just recreational, it doesn't matter at all. Um, yeah. They're getting this, this booth, this, this piece of dried out, irradiated, flavorless, terpeneless flower that it's not enjoyable. No, harsh on the throat. That's, you know, like, will you get high? I guess so, but you're not going to enjoy this, this smoking experience. No, it detracts, and and yeah. that's the thing. It can be a turnoff from people, perhaps not thinking that oh, this isn't for me because of that. So, you want to put you want to put the best foot forward, and yeah, craft craft is the way. I mean, scale. You know, they may have the purest intentions and the best of efforts, but at scale. These things are very hard to accomplish. I mean, you, you there's so many things that you can't do uh, well, when you're when you're at scale. Like you can't, you have to spray, you have to be proactive, you have to do these things. Whereas my small craft organic grow, I keep good conditions and I don't have to spray these things. Exactly, absolutely. But at scale, I, when I, you've I, got I craft, will, craft will beat out every single time because as soon as you do go to scale, the quality drops no matter what. Yeah. That perfect example, I, like I am a, I am a huge supporter of a hand trimmed uh, product, huge Me supporter too. versus machine trimmed. Oh, I think 100%. benefits are huge, and you notice them right away when you open up a bag of hand trim. Yep. Uh, at scale, that's impossible. Yeah. It's literally impossible to do. Yeah. You can't fill a warehouse with weed and then hand trim it. You need a team of a hundred people trimming weed all day long. And that's expensive still, you know? So, so there goes your margin. Like you're paying yeah. for people to take your weed at that point. Yeah, like exactly. Here. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. You put a hundred dollar bill in every eighth for you. <laughs> so good uh, question the chat's gonna allow me to get on the soapbox here and uh darcy's asking about accuracy of home test kits um well that's the thing darcy they aren't accurate at all the t-check um and I'll, I'll blatantly say this initially advertised a plus or minus 10 percent accuracy which they've now later changed to a plus or minus 15 percent telling me that enough people bought it accepted it as being good that they were able to relax their specs and go down to a lower grade of equipment maybe i don't know if that's what's happened but i'm just saying plus plus 15 percent 15 percent right that means you could have a flower that is legitimately 15 percent thc be marked as a 30 percent no 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 on, on, on the accuracy of the specification so if it's 15 percent, you could take two samples you could yeah. have one measure at um say 16 and a half percent and another one measure at 14 am i doing my math correctly let's go at 10 percent, so it's easy there. so you're thank you thank you so 11 and a half versus five percent versus 10 percent yeah. So that's a, a a pretty drastic mar- margin of uh, of error. Yeah, no, no, that's the thing for for absolute change and absolute swing. I mean, maybe somewhat reasonably, but I don't know. They, our team over high again, they've played with them. They they say they like it and whatnot, but um, I think realistically, you're not going to get any sort of accurate, repeatable results from these home test kits. Um, and if you do want to get testing, find a, a grow shop or a place that can actually right, do. If you're, trying to get a vague, if you're trying to get a vague idea fine in the same way that you can take 
uh, a lux meter and do like a rough conversion calculation to get what your PPFD is at the canopy. So again, you're not going to be accurate, but you can get a rough idea. Yeah. Yeah. It puts you in the ballpark. There's things that I like, uh, or I would love to have the ability to test for Washington state, unless you actually have a license, you can't send flower. Even if you have a medical like prescription or recommendation, you still can't send things to get tested, but there's things I'm working with that have CBD. Well, the, the parent did, but does the offspring? I don't know. I really wish I could find out, but yeah. these things at least will, you know, Get, get you in the ballpark at least okay well it's okay, there yeah. was a cb scientific too it was kind of like a color drops you know the darker the color the more thc or cbd it had and that at least you'd be like okay well i'm hitting at least somewhere around five percent cbd cool yeah there's something but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> other other states though and i don't know if canada is the same but yeah anybody man if you've you send in a, your flower sample with the money and they you're able to legally have it tested yeah, that's I a wish. Bomb, like, way to go for sure. Yeah. Test with the bong says four plants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, a really hey, good calling in the chat. Agreed. There, main forty bucks, you can get uh, can, uh, cannabinoid turf testing. Um, like that's okay. that's fantastic, man. Awesome. I wish I could do that. Yeah. Um, you know, the science is coming. The science right. is coming I, in a big way. I think it's cheap in New York too for testing. New York City. Yeah. New York City. It's all from now. New York, York. Now. <laughs> New York <laughs> City. What you city boys doing down here? It's picante. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, uh, funny. Uh, here's my hemp. It's twenty five percent THC. Oopsie doopsies. Yep. 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 I've, uh, you know, known a couple people who their area, their, the testing, you know, the red tape or whatever, the, the procedure just got delayed because they didn't, the, the governing body didn't really know what to do. And meanwhile, their field went hot. It's just like, oh, these things need to stop. Fortunately, the person, you know, is able to recover from that. And next year they'll probably get priority as far as like, oh, we should probably test this person's field now. But uh, with hemp and CBD, yeah, T or that THC level. If once it, <laughs> what are they doing? What is the what is the hemp grower doing? Because it matters. Yeah, Maybe the does. same test. Hmm. Yeah, that was kind of a rambling out loud thought train there. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> Let's all right. Let's just see where this train goes. Off the rambling, rambling out loud is my specialty. It's like how do how do you talk for two minutes and end with a question to yourself? <laughs> it's called getting older that's what we're all doing <laughs> right? old men talking about cannabis so yeah, yeah. that just kind of happened one day Got old. <laughs> now i'm gonna go yell at the clouds shake your fist while you do it though yeah. hey, yo. <laughs> minnesota is filing finally allowing remediation with hot products I don't know like it's a good thing well they well, used to just oh, hot thc gotcha i gotcha yeah oh okay 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 sorry hemp i get it now yeah thank you ryan yeah um yeah if you had to destroy the entire crop oh uh, if there was oh i got it i got it. i got you that took me a second i was a little slow it's like what do you mean right I, you know i wonder even with like we're talking remediation if they're able to I don't know because they would probably need a separate license to take that and then distill it and then take the CBD and then chuck the THC out. But no, you you need a different license for that, I imagine. Yeah, I wouldn't mind growing hemp though. I'd love to try some some hemp here. I've I've grown some CBD flower. It's 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 fun. Yeah, I've only done like THC ones. Harlequin, uh, I grew. Yeah. Um, actually, I think you might've been here earlier. Uh, Hillbilly Herb just sent me some cherry wine CBD though. Yeah, so nice. that's cool. Technically hemp, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited to grow that. Yeah. Yeah. No, Hillbilly's a great guy. Shout out Hillbilly. Yes. Right. I don't know. 
Anybody else got any grow questions and some grow hell? I'll throw a question up in the chat. If not, we might start winding it down. Good, good to see you back. Good to see you back. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> I think we're all excited to have Matt back into the uh, into the land of the living here and the in the public eye. He's, yeah. uh, he's too much of a too much of a character to not have on in the community uh, character umbrella. Character and good information too. You know, I personally enjoy watching your videos and we were talking earlier, margin of error and light meters. That's one of the videos that I absolutely love that you did. You're like, this is why the light meter on your phone or, you know, and THC testing, kind of similar ballpark, yep. but don't bet the bank on it. Yeah. And a lot of people did. So yeah, you know, I enjoy your content. I'm glad to see you back. <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate it hugely. And of course, same to you, Jack. Thanks. Um, Thanks. I always enjoy seeing always what you're fun. doing with the community. And uh, do my best. let's let's take a minute again. Like we, we plugged it at the beginning of the, the stream here. But uh, guys, down below in the chat, Timothy's Crab Shack, my good friend Tim, him and his girlfriend Tanya have a new show called Tokes. And there's like tacos and tokes, Tim and Tanya. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's that's uh, new new episodes uh, right now. I think it's every other week. You guys are sort of aiming for. I think a couple episodes up. Highly entertaining. It's it's cooking and cannabis in 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 one amazing package. So certainly go and uh, watch that. And it's not just Tim. It's like I say, it's, it's, it's lovely girlfriend Tanya as well. Uh, showing you guys some mag yeah, magnificent she's recipes. Together, she's putting together a, a Halloween costume beside me right now. Ah, nice, nice. She enthusiastically waves her arms like this. <laughs> and if you're not familiar tim and i living soil society uh we're we're bringing that back in uh shorts i think we're gonna be doing some shorts here yep. and uh playing around with that format a little bit i've been playing with that a little bit myself here uh i've had the 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 five gallon uh bucket build there that they recently did and some hot pepper eaten um, I'm going to do another hot pepper one too, because I got a Carolina Reaper that's uh, sitting on this plant right here. So um, I don't know why I don't like myself, but you know. You know, I, I will say though, I was, I was a little disappointed. You chopped up the peppers and mixed them. I thought you were going to go just for a straight bite. I thought you were going to go for it, man. I'm not making one of those videos. I want to actually <laughs> taste it and enjoy it. <laughs> Without dying. Yeah. I have no need to give birth to molten lava. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so getting graphic folks, you're on the photosyntax show. Uh, <laughs> has anyone come across any breeders producing triploid THC genetics yet? That's a good question. Um, I can answer unless one of you gentlemen want to take that one. Okay. So triploids, you're going to have trouble breeding out. That's a characteristic that you don't really get it's it's a genetic mutation that can happen in just about any plant um and it's if you take it and clone it it's likely going to work itself out same with um parents it doesn't work because it's a genetic thing um you you'd have to was it triploids and triploids you could potentially there there's something there i can't remember the genetics behind it uh hey hey Ken, throw throw something in the chat there i'm sure you can explain it better than me I think, so. I think breeder Steve was working with it and you had to get it to like, um, so, okay. So the diploid was like two sets of the chromosomes. The triploid was three and then it went up to a quad. So it like went up to four and then you backbred it to the triploid or triploid and, and guys do not quote me, but somehow that was creating or at least for breed or steve this is where i've heard the most of it like that was creating pistolless females so essentially something yeah. that you couldn't pollinate which yep. you know shit seed makers would love that you can never make seeds of theirs you have to keep buying it um so that's my only like reference or knowledge to it which is fairly loose but again it's something that's more theoretical than practical even though it has been accomplished and probably just by like happenstance or luck but they're looking into it yeah i'm, I'm not aware of any current breeder that has stabilized right. genetics for you to play with right now yeah yeah because I, I thought there was some sort of genetic marriage and things that wouldn't work there uh, he, he, he can uh broke it down a bit there in the uh, chat oh, cool. as i knew he would so i like haken 
You know Good to meet you, you Haken. I have not seen you in a chat before. Good to meet you. Yeah, that's our that's our man. He, he otherwise goes as Wicked Chronic. And nice. He's, uh, he's one of our uh, encyclopedias in the Discord. Exceptionally knowledgeable. <laughs> Exceptionally. Yeah. So. If in doubt, ask Haken. <laughs> awesome. Always good to have that friend. Phone a friend. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, never, never be afraid to surround yourself with people far more intelligent than you are. Mm-hmm. So, That's key. Yeah. That's crucial. Crucial, man. I went and saw my my little nephew do his BMX race, and he did pretty good this year. And he won the race, and he actually like won the the points championship. And it was the end of the year, and I was like, you know what? If you're the best guy, you need to find somewhere else to ride. <laughs> he yeah. kind of looked at me. I'm like. Cause you're never going to get better. And yeah. he saw, I like saw it like sink into him. And he's like, yeah, I'm going for the, I'm going in the next league next year. I was like, good kid. Good. Learn how to lose it. Learning how to lose is important too. But yeah, man, if you're the best, you're never going to get better. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's great advice, man. Great if advice. you're the smartest guy in the room, there's a problem. Yeah, there's really a problem if I'm the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> no, that's, what, that's what I meant. If you're the, if Chad is the smartest guy in the room, there's a problem. <laughs> you know, I, I still wear Velcro, people. I still wear Velcro. No. Hey, 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 efficiency. That's not a sign of intelligence. That's a sign of efficiency. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions or anything? While you while you got me, while you got me, while you got Chad, while you got Matt. I am I am not seeing anything here. Uh invite to the Discord down below. One day we'll Discord. convince Chad to come hang out with us, I'm sure. Please do, Chad. Uh, <laughs> bribery. Yeah. Bribery. I'm 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 Discord averse, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can yeah, talk. It's, about it's, 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 <laughs> right on, come on guys. Over Thanks to the for... Discord, Chad. We want to talk about your balls. <laughs> my hydroton needs to be washed no. hey. <laughs> thanks thanks for sending me out the link today man i was stoked I, I just sat back down got home on a walk and i'm like that's back all right photosyntech i'm hopping on nice. hopping in chat but thanks right. for sending yeah. me the link well, thanks, thanks for joining us good. yeah absolutely. always enjoy chatting with you chad um all right guys well i think we'll wind it down here we've almost been going on for like two hours which uh is actually kind of unheard of here but it's been a while Tim is starving to death right now I Tim is going you. to start gnawing on his own hand and yeah. uh, actually I gotta probably go feed my son who might yeah, be you have like the dog children. at this point uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right guys so if, yeah, if, thanks. yeah thanks for Discord link below there's gonna be like after smoke I'm sure everybody's heading over there to, to so happy to have you back man. Have a chat, man happy to be back guys more new content coming uh meet the grower episodes we're bringing back uh Hollywood squares and you know maybe show a plant or two so <laughs> that being said ladies and gentlemen boys and girls appreciate y'all Chad Tim thanks for joining the chat man and uh come come chat with us in the Discord. Hey, peace out, guys.